Greetings everyone and welcome back to Inside EVs. My name is Andre. I am one of Inside EVs European writers and I've been showing you the electric vehicles that we get here in Europe and you don't get in the US. Some models might be common, but the car I'm driving today you probably don't even know what it is. So I'm sure you've heard of uh, Peugeot and Citroën because they were once sold in the US. But the car I'm driving today is still made by Peugeot Citroën PSA, which now after buying uh, Fiat Chrysler is now called Stellantis and it has over a dozen brands under its umbrella. I'm driving the DS3 Crossback E-Tense. DS is uh, Peugeot's uh, luxury brand and uh, its name harks back to uh, the original Citroën DS of the 1960s, one of the world's most iconic cars. It's so iconic that uh, PSA decided to uh, create a, an entire brand called DS and built around its uh, design-focused avant-garde image. And before DS became its own brand in 2015, Citroën sold uh, several DS-badged models for a few years. They had the DS3, which was a Mini Cooper rival, the DS4, which was a kind of coupe-like uh, crossover, and then the DS5, which was um, a big luxury people carrier slash crossover type of thing. That's still one of the most unusual cars I've ever been aboard of, a modern car that is, the DS5. So what is the DS3 Crossback e tense Well, it's the fully electric version of the DS3 Crossback. You can have it with uh, three different 1.2 liter three-cylinder engines or a 1.5 liter diesel or this fully electric version. It is built on the same platform as the Peugeot E208, the E2008, which is the crossover version of the E208, as well as the Opel Mokka E and the Corsa E. All these vehicles are mechanically identical underneath. They all have a front mounted 100 kilowatt electric motor, so that's around 135 horsepower. And they all draw from the same 50 kilowatt hour lithium ion battery pack that's liquid cooled. Its claimed WLTP range is um, over 300 kilometers, but don't expect to achieve that in the real world. When I picked this car up from uh, Peugeot, it was fully charged, and the range meter predicted that I could do 190 kilometers. It was kind of cold, it was like 15, 16 degrees uh, Celsius. So maybe if it were a bit warmer outside, perhaps you can get it past 200 kilometers, maybe 220, 230. I've seen some people reporting that that's what they achieved. So it isn't an especially long range electric vehicle, although 50 kilowatt hours is still a decent sized battery pack. Charging this vehicle can be done at up to 100 kilowatts and at peak rate, you can charge the battery to around 80% in half an hour. Via its onboard charger, you can charge it at up to uh, 11 kilowatts, which takes around five and a half hours. Or if you have just a seven kilowatt charger or wall box or whatever, it's gonna take seven, seven and a half hours. The vehicle has three driving modes, eco, normal, and sport and you only get the full 100 kilowatt output from the motor in sport mode. The vehicle sprints to 100 kilometers per hour from standstill in 8.7 seconds and it tops out at 150 kilometers per hour or almost 90 miles an hour. As with many lower powered EVs, I have noticed that it isn't the most sprightly thing off the line, but once you get it moving, in-gear punch is uh, pretty good, even at high weight speeds like we're doing now. So I'm doing 120 kilometers per hour and we're going uphill and if I floor it, 130, 140, and we have reached top speed. Oh no, it's still accelerating, 152. I think it doesn't have any more to give.
it's not fast and it's not slow. You won't be holding up traffic, but you won't really be having that much fun in this car. And as I'm getting off the highway here, I'm making quite a sharp right turn. The vehicle seems quite stable, although there is some, uh, some lean that I have noticed. The suspension is generally soft and quite pleasant. You cannot escape the fact that it doesn't have independent rear suspension. I certainly notice that in every car, because no matter how soft the suspension is, if you have the two rear wheels connected physically, you're going to send the uh, vibration and all the harshness from one wheel to the other. So if you hit a pothole on the left side of the car, the jolt will be transmitted throughout the entire body. It's by no means bad, but cars with independent rear suspension just feel that little bit more sophisticated. The car is very easy to drive, the steering is super light, and it's not completely disconnected from the wheels, although immediately off-center um, it's not the sharpest in the world. The seating position is fairly high, but it's not that high compared to other crossovers. With its seat in its lowest position, the way I have it set now, I actually feel like I'm quite low and cocooned in the vehicle, and I actually like this feeling. The car gets a standard digital gauge cluster. It's not the sharpest looking thing on the market. In fact, if you get closer to the display, you can start seeing some of the pixels, but it does the job. You can have the map displayed on there. You can get your uh, electricity consumption figures range and all of that. On the left, you have the power charge thing that tells you how much power you're using or how much you're putting back into the battery. And on the right, we have the battery meter. The main reason why this car appeals to buyers, aside from the fact that it's electric, now it has to be the way it looks. I'm sure you will find it quite polarizing because it is quite out there with that B pillar ornament thing. So the metal ends like halfway up the B pillar. It looks like a reversed shark fin or the strange headlights that are full LEDs, but they have like a, a weird shape that we, that I don't think I've seen on another car. Oh yes, I have the Lexus IS facelift has similarly shaped headlights. The grille is very bold and it has a nice uh, geometric pattern to it. It's fully open, which is surprising for an electric vehicle. This car is dramatic from every angle. If you look at it from the side, you will notice the, the B pillar. There's also like a C-shaped crease there. And the car also has a quite dramatic looking pop-out door handles, which are really nice when you have a keyless entry because they pop out when you approach the vehicle and it feels uh, special. It feels more special than just hearing the vehicle unlock and flashing its lights. The rear end is dominated by uh, the slim LED light clusters that get sequential turn signals that don't light up all at once. It says E10s on the lower left side of the hatch, DS3 on the other side, and the DS badge, which I think is quite a stylish badge in the logo, is a prominently placed in the center. Oh, and the same goes for the grill up front. The DS badge is uh, prominently displayed there. I would also add that this vehicle doesn't really look like a conventional crossover. It's not really trying to pull off the mini SUV look. It just looks like a slightly tall hatchback with the increased ride height. It has doors that cover the sills, which is another crossover trick. The interior of the DS3 crossback is pretty much as dramatic as the exterior, if not more from certain standpoints. You get a lot of diamond stitching on the leather even on the dash. And the same diamond-like pattern is repeated in this uh, metal trim around the parking brake button and drive mode buttons, as well as the window switches, the door lock and unlock, and the rear window lock and unlock buttons, all of which are located on the center console. There are no buttons on the front doors. Rear passengers do get buttons for their windows though, which it has to be said only roll down about halfway. And even these front windows don't really go down all the way. About an inch still remains visible. The diamond pattern 
is also repeated in the, these touch controls, or rather shortcuts for the infotainment, as well as some climate functions. They work fairly well, sometimes uh, they don't. It's a bit hit and miss. I'd say they work seven out of 10 times. The stop start engine button, why does it say engine when this car is electric? It should say motor, now that I think of it, is also a diamond shaped thing. And what's a bit unusual about this car is that you have to uh, keep it pressed. You don't just quick press it. Nothing happens if you quick press it. So while it's very quiet, refined, comfortable, it has decent range, you feel fairly special inside with all this uh, daring design. The DS3 Crossback e is not perfect. Space in the rear is very limited. I am six foot tall and I barely fit behind myself. You don't have a rear armrest. There are no USB ports for rear passengers. And because of the weird B pillar thing that I mentioned when I was talking about the exterior, there is actually less glass area. So for shorter passengers, things might get a little claustrophobic. The trunk is also not massive. It's just over 300 liters. So for carrying four or five people, this isn't the best crossover by any means. All in all, I think it's a nice vehicle, one that will be purchased by people who are especially interested in uh, style, design and uh, the flamboyance. People who want to stand out. This vehicle manages to be one of the weirdest looking things on the road, but it's uh, not uh, unpleasant to look at. It's just unusual. DS clearly is a fiercely French company and you can definitely see that in and around the DS3 Crossback e -tense. Let us know in the comments if you knew about this car before today and what you think of the way it looks mixed with the, the kind of performance and range that it offers. Would you be interested in buying something like this in the US? Do you think it would sell? Tell us. This pretty much concludes my drive of the DS3 Crossback e -tens. I hope it was an insightful video for you, especially since you probably won't ever see one of these on the road, at least not in the US, if you don't travel to Europe. Make sure to subscribe to the channel if you haven't done it already. You can find me on my own channel called One Tire Fire. And until I see you again in the next Euro review here on the Inside EVs channel, I bid you farewell.